Hey guys, what's up? Shao Style. Well, this video, what I want to talk about is basically how to do some like audio syncing right now. There are multiple ways to do things, right? Again, not to, I don't want to sound like I'm stroking my own penis, but you know, I do try to like learn in as many methods as possible when it comes to editing because I want to see what works for me, what's faster, what takes the shortest amount of time, you know, that's basically what you want. You want to spend like the least amount of time as possible when it comes to like video editing, right? And one thing that does can take up a lot of time is audio syncing, you know? There are two main ways that you are able to say, well, the first one, obviously, you can sync manually. You can click and drag, but you know, again, fuck that, you know, especially when you have like a bunch of like clips and stuff. All these are clips. So you see all the cuts. These are each individual clips from like, you know, starting and stopping the camera. Usually, we'll probably use three cameras. So we have like the overhead camera, then there's a handheld camera, and then like we got the main one, which is basically the GH5. So that's the main camera where he's talking towards, right? Because it's the previous camera. So usually the camera is stationary. So we have three cameras, obviously a lot of clips, and he has his lavalier mic. What we do, and I actually suggested this to Paul because it makes my life easier, is that when we are recording, leave the lavalier mic on. What that does is basically you're going to have a very long audio track. See, as you can see here, we have like a nearly three-hour audio clip, right? Now, the reason why I have it that way is because I have a certain way to sync up audio that's that works for me, and I'm going to show you what works for me and it saves me a lot of time and it will save you guys a lot of time as well, right? So that's the first thing to keep in mind. When we uh, are recording, we use one long audio track, and as we're recording, pretty much we don't have to worry about starting or stopping the audio. We just start the cameras. And he does what he does, says what he just says, turn off the camera, move on to something else, and keep it going, right? Usually, I try to teach you guys how to get things done in a manner that's going to be not necessarily free. I mean, obviously, if you have something like Adobe Premiere Pro, either you found it on the internet, and, you know, I'm sure that's going to happen, <laughs> or you have the subscription, right? Uh, that costs money, right? I want to try to show you as much as I can without, you know, buying any plugins and whatnot. But in this situation, um, I think if you're going to invest in yourself, if you want to start a channel, if you want to save a lot of time, something you may want to invest is a plugin from Red Giant. All right, so this is a plugin from Red Giant, and I've used this thing since. I don't can't remember, but I mean, I've been using this guy for like years and like this is one of like the best fucking things you can think of. Um, it's not cheap. It's a $300 plugin. Uh, it definitely has upgraded a lot from when I started using it to like the newer versions. Uh, the newer version is definitely way better and like, yeah, it just, it's awesome, right? So, however, the thing about using this software is that you have to be very organized and I made that mistake when I started using this software, right? But as you can see here, pretty much it's labeled camera one, camera two, audio recorder one, audio recorder two, and audio recorder three. With this software, you want to make sure you keep everything separate. Different camera, different folder, different audio mic, different folder. Don't don't cram all your fucking footage into one folder. Don't cram all your audio sources into one folder as well because it's not going to work well. But uh, here's one of the projects. All right, so we have like the one audio file, like we said. You know, so I'm going to drag this into Pluralize. See, it says audio recorder one. Now, again, if you have multiple audio sources, definitely have them separated. Either uh, put all your audio sources from different mics in their own individual folders or drop them in individually, one by one. Now, you can do the same thing with the cameras. So, again, we have, like, the GH5. That's our main one. So, we're going to drop that first because uh, depending on the order that you put, uh, you drop in the footage, it kind of organizes it. So, we got our GH5 is our main camera. So, I'm going to drop that in. Our secondary camera is a RX100. Drop that in because that's a secondary camera. And the third one is the top down. So, I consider that the third camera. And again, see how we have all the footage in its own folder? It's the way to do it. You can rename them. I kind of got into the habit of doing that. So I'll just say camera one, camera two. And as you can see, it's creating like, uh, it's preparing the sync. What it's doing is creating cache files. So uh, basically, you want to make sure that just about any software, you want to make sure like uh, your cache folder is at a uh, fast reading SSD. Um, by default, it's going to be in your local C drive. Now, I try to make sure that I leave my C drive only for my software. Any type of uh, cache that my software will create, I'll have a own specific folder and a dedicated SSD. Pretty much I have a M.2 as my cache folder. The reason why I use an M.2 as my cache is because it just like, it just reads faster, obviously. And yeah, that's really, yeah, it just reads faster, right? So yeah, having a dedicated SSD or just its own storage device for all your cache files because they add up. So as you can see here, I got 72 gigabytes used and mainly just cache. <laughs> You know, Premiere Pro and After Effects primarily, it uses a lot of cache. So, you know, and if uh, I didn't set 
the folder here, by default, I would have been to my local disk. And like I said, 72 gigabytes of just cache on your local disk is going to slow things down. I usually max out the volume. I want to affect the volume on your project here, but it just helps sync it. So yeah, once it says uh, ready to synchronize, you hit synchronize. And it's pretty cool to watch. You can see it. It starts moving all the clips. So as you can see, this is like the long audio take that we have, again, uncut. And this is another reason why I asked Paul to like, you know, leave the audio file alone. The sync happens as it's recorded, right? So I don't have to worry about fucking like, you know, finding like the damn right clip for like the right time. Like, oh, this happened at this time or this happened after that. So I'm finding the, the clip. Fuck with it. <laughs> yeah, fuck with it. I've done that. It's such a waste of time. And that's why I work like this, right? This saves me a lot of damn time. Use the audio file as your timeline. And then pretty much when you sync all your footage, it gets synced um, according to like the timeline of the audio file, right? So everything is linear. So now all you have to do is pretty much cut out the gaps that are in between the footage here, the clips, right? It's not that big of a deal, you know. This is the other thing I love about using Pluralize. As you can see here, it applied an audio drift correction. So pretty much what Pluralize is doing here, it kind of like slightly either increases the speed of the audio or decreases it to make sure it goes in sync with the footage, right? Another important thing is like i said make sure you drop in all your footage and files different cameras have different folders right because you can see here camera one is in one layer camera two is in uh, one layer camera three is in one layer and camera and then the audio that's four layers now towards the end of like the video i kind of want to get this out of the way then towards the end of the video i want to show you why this is better than using the other methods that's actually built into premiere pro right so we're going to export our timeline you can uh, color on synchronized clips i usually leave that move on synchronized clips to the end of that i usually uncheck that obviously clips are numbered right so pretty much if there's a clip that's not synchronized for whatever reason i want that numbered clip to be right after this the video clip that is numbered right so if video clip number one is synchronized in the timeline then obviously a video clip number two is not synchronized and obviously video clip number two goes after video clip number one so i'll make sure i rather leave it i'd rather not move it towards the end of the clip that way i know where it belongs in my edit and in, in the timeline right so hopefully that makes sense so i'm gonna export this i'm gonna export this to my project so export yeah, then it opens up, which I appreciate that. I, like, now, I don't save it usually. I mean, you could, but for the most part, I, I don't. And for this video, I'm, I'm not going to save it. So before we drop it in, what I do is you want to create a folder in your project file. It's going to import all your footage, and it's going to create a timeline for you. Now, the cool thing is this creates what is called an XML file. Basically, it works almost like a blueprint. It tells Premiere Pro, okay, this belongs here and this and that. So it's, and the cool thing about that is when you drag this file into Premiere Pro, uh, it has the data to let you, to tell Premiere Pro where it can find the files. So anyways, I'm going to drop the folder in, and it's going to start importing like all the, folder, all the files automatically. Usually, I have it in have an ingest setting that creates a proxy. So as the folder, the files gets dropped into Premiere Pro, it automatically starts creating a proxy. You know, then it works in the background, but I'm not going to do that for this video because uh, I'm recording and it's, it's going to mess up my video capture here. So I'm just going to leave that off. Also, that's going to take a lot of time. So I'll save that for another video. So I drop my Pluralize folder here. Now, it's going to freeze up my computer a bit. Hopefully, the capture's not messed up. But uh, when that happens, or in my case, it's happening, don't freak out. So let it be for a bit. So everything gets important, you know, like I said, pretty much you got your uh, GH5, my three cameras and my audio, right? Along with like the um, audio drift corrected waveform file that it created. Really cool, right? Plural eyes is awesome. And also it created a sequence. It matches the footage that we recorded with, right? In this case, it's a 4K, you know, video footage at 30 frames per second. Really, really cool, you know? This is the main reason why I use Pluralize and why I prefer it versus any other methods that I'm going to talk about in a bit. In Pluralize, we had, you know, three folders of camera footage, right? Each folder was its own camera. So in this case, it created three files. And this is why it's also important to drop the footage and the sequential order that you want them to. This is how I do it, so I'm not 100% sure if that's how it works. But I mean, in my case, you know, I drop camera one first, camera two first, second, camera three, third, and so on, right? And the reason why I do that, because like it kind of like puts it in its, uh, in its proper layer uh, in the timeline of Premiere Pro. And as you can see here, pretty much we've got one layer, video one. This is from like the main camera and the layer two from the secondary camera, then uh, the top down camera, which is layer three. 
I'm going to kind of cut this video short off here, and I'm going to make another video to show you how I pretty much uh, work with this. Once I have, like, the, the clips inside the timeline, how I created a multicam and all this stuff. But um, I kind of want to, like, show you why I use Plurize versus the other methods, right? Because, again, I want to keep this video short. Now, um, I follow this guy, learn how to edit stuff. Uh, you know, I learned a lot from this guy, but uh, he has one video that shows you how to use like the seeking command inside Premiere Pro, right? Uh, definitely check it out. His name is Learn How to Edit Stuff, and pretty much it shows you you can actually right click inside the timeline of the footage selected, and then there's an option that says, that says syncing. You can do that. So I actually dropped in all my footage. This is all the footage that uh, just imported from Pluralize, right? It just is all jumbled because it's not synced. You can actually say select these guys, right click, and then you have an option here to call synchronize. So we got our three cameras and our audio. If, if I was to select only the first clips, right click, I get the synchronize option here available, right? Now, the problem is if I was to select everything, then I right click, the synchronize option is uh, grayed out. I'm not able to do that. So I have to pretty much go individually with all the clips to match it with like the right audio file. And yeah, fuck all that. <laughs> you can, as you can imagine, that could take up a lot of time, right? If I have to like, you know, search for all the footage, drop it in the timeline and why not? If it's a short video, then awesome. You know, definitely cool. But as you can see, you know, me and Paul, we have like a three hour long audio clip with a bunch of like takes from like different cameras. So to sync all that will be a nightmare. Here's another guy, pretty much, uh, this is from, like, uh, the Adobe Creative Cloud website on YouTube, and, like, he shows you how to, like, um, there's a feature inside of Premiere Pro where you can, like, select the clips that you want synchronized. Yeah, he highlights them. Then, pretty much, you can do, like, a right-click command, and you can say synchronize or create a multicam. Yeah, see, you can create multi-camera source sequence. So you select your audio file and all, like, the clips that you want. Once they're highlighted inside of your project bin, you right-click and you create a multi-camera and it works. However, the reason why I, do, I personally do not like using that method is because, as you can see here, it scatters your footage fucking everywhere, and it's just a pain in the ass to work with. As you can see here, it's, here, see, it's a base clip, base clip, base clip, base clip, base clip. So basically, this is from like the same source, so the same video clip or same camera, whatever, but it got scattered around to different layers, right? So it's very, it's a jumbled mess, whereas like uh, uh, Plurize, you know, sequence, one camera creates one layer. So in this case, probably one camera, because it's multiple clips, it gets scattered everywhere. And that's and the reason why I don't like editing like that is that when you create a multi-camera, as you can see here, these are like the virtual cameras that it creates for you. So as you're going through the timeline, you can actually pretty much uh, jump between whatever clip that you want. Each number is a camera, you know, quote unquote camera. So in this case, he has like 19 cameras to jump around. And like that's to me is a fucking mess because like if you have like a lot of clips, say in, in this case, see all the clips that we got here, if they were to be scattered around. I mean, I had projects where I, I created the multi-cam sequence inside of Premiere Pro and then I was up to like 30 camera options because like the clips got scattered everywhere. Yeah, it's a total mess. And I don't mean to like disrespect these guys. I mean, I think it's cool. You know, obviously people, some people are not ready or do not want to spend the money on a plugin like Plurize. And this situation, I think if you want to get more into it, it's probably going to be a good investment. Already good search on the internet. <laughs> I'm not encouraging anything bad, but just saying. Uh, but, you know, if you can be a legit business and, you know, more down the line, obviously, you know, support these businesses and buy the, the software, right? So uh, that's pretty much it for this video. But uh, in this case, this is how I start when it comes to like, you know, how I create my timeline and all that. So what I'm going to do is uh, with this project file, I'm going to show you how I pretty much set everything up, create the multi-camera, how I fix the audio and all the shit. So my mission is to show you how to get shit done as quick and easily as possible because we're fucking lazy. Being lazy is good, right? But progressive lazy, not stupid lazy. There's a difference, right? So, all right. Um, I guess that's all I got for this video, right? So yeah, Plurize, check it out. Uh, no disrespect to the other guys I mentioned. I think uh, I follow them because, you know, I'm learning stuff from them. But um, just like with anything, once you, like, understand certain things, you want to, like, see what's more out there, what's the next step. So even for me, if you learn something from me, keep it going, you know. If there's something else that, you know, ben you learned that benefits you, forget everything I said and move on and then make a video about it so I can learn from you what you did differently, right? That works faster, right? So anyways, that's all I got for this video. Thanks for watching. Take care and peace.